Hey nerds, we are here with uh, Kevin Smith, Jason Muse. Guys, uh, Scooby Doo, yes. iconic legend, and now you two kind of iconic legends. We're working our way up there, man. The idea is you play bit parts and kisses Scooby Doo movie until you get to play the lead in your Scooby Doo movie. Because if Kiss is beating Scooby Doo, you give it 10 years, easily they could be meeting Jay and Silent Bob. Well, now you bring it up. Are Jay and Scooby uh, long lost brothers? I think long lost lovers. Oh. And you had to take it and ruin it. He was on to something smart and you had to put a wiener in it. Oh. Yes, you're absolutely right. Scooby and Jay are aggregates. Now, Scooby Doo is. Um, it's you know something we all grew up with. It was it's it's uh, such an integral part of American culture. Yes. How is it to to now be a part of it and you know break into the to? It's I mean all in all seriousness, it's nice to be involved in any way, shape or form. Man, that that always feels nice to be included. That it's Scooby Doo. That it's something that like we grew up watching. Like those Scooby Doo meet people episodes like Batman and Robin and, and Don Knotts most people remember and stuff like th that was a massive part of my childhood we didn't have cable or the internet we only had Scooby-Doo meeting famous people so it was a big deal and to be part of that we're not the famous people he's meeting but we're <laughs> we're involved some way we're standing there looking at the famous people it's very cool now this isn't the first time you've done animation you had your clerks animated yeah uh, how is uh, just the, the you know the voice recording different from that? Um, when you work for somebody else, you're not done until they tell you you're done. Yeah. So like in mine, I'm like you know generally if I'm playing Silent Bob, I have no microphone work to do. Uh -huh. Stand in front of a mic, say nothing. I'm like that's perfect. But when you work for somebody else, like you could deliver a performance and be like, oh that was awesome. And they're like, okay, let's try it again. But can you do it uh, better? And you're like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you know you're kind of standing you're standing up to somebody else's scrutinization right. and, whatnot. and that's great when you're there you want to give them whatever they want like same way when I work with actors or actresses they're they're very eager to give you what you're looking for when I'm in that situation I'm never like I, I'm a director sometimes I'm just putty in their hands like tell me what to do please now uh, I just last question because uh, the, the clerks animated it did feel like it had a lot of uh, scooby-doo uh, nostalgia in it there's the the guest star each week there was these kind of mysteries and it was Unmasking the villain. Was, was, was Scooby-Doo a big part of your plan? Not really, man. The influence of the Clerks cartoon, I don't even know if it was the movie itself. Like, the cartoon, I think we were all big Simpsons fans. And so, you know, we knew we couldn't do the Simpsons, but we were trying to build a Simpsons universe. And the boys uh, that I worked with on the show, one of them that I co-created the show with, Dave Mandel, he'd come from the land of Seinfeld and from SNL, so he had a very distinctive kind of take, and like, we could take this cartoon and kind of do this, and it was fun, we did it for six episodes, but then it died and stuff. So, you know, it's nice that it exists, people still kind of ID with it or talk about it from time to time, but I can't say that Scooby was an influence. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you so much.